Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We're getting started here. We are setting up the stream as we speak, so stay tuned. We're going to be talking about um, Jared Isaacman. We're going to be talking about um, some info from Jared about a SpaceX lunar suit, and we're going to be talking about Booster 7 and a little bit about Ship 24. Uh, just a tiny bit about Ship 24, but we do have some incoming testing schedules coming up and we'll talk about that too today on the space news pod so make sure if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button because we talk about starship all the time and if you're a spacex fan this is your spot we're here for you be here for us it takes a second it also tells youtube that you actually enjoy starship content and you like spacex content and they'll give you more starship content in the future from not just my channel but other channels as well so that's a good thing. If you'd like the video, that'd be really great. Let's try to get to 100 likes today. That'll be that'll be cool. Uh, for the U.S. people out there, happy Independence Day, happy Fourth of July. Greetings. Bob Brink, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Pretty has space pants. Put on your space pants. If you're not a member of the channel yet, put on your space pants. Become a member. Helps us out. Helps us continue doing this stuff. Helps me continue to travel to different launches. Stuff like that. It helps me continue doing this channel because becoming a member is like $5 a month. You can support independent live streamers like myself, independent news people like myself who continue to uh, do this. I've been here for three years, something like that. Three, three and a half years or something. It's ridiculous. I'll be, I'll be on soon, guys. So stay tuned, hit that sub button. Enjoying the fourth, nice Bob. Blind Boy 64, we're going to get into that with the Static Fire a little bit today. There's not a whole lot of new info about Static Fire stuff coming up, but we do have some things we can talk about. And this is a conversation, too. So, you know, you you uh, send me a message at me. Make sure to at me at Space News Pod in chat so I know that you're talking to me. Because you could just be talking to, to other people out there, other Space Flight fans. And we may have a special, special, super special guest today. Maybe get a little. Maybe we get a, a mask guest some screen time. I don't know where she went. Anyway, you want to do this? Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the show. Hello. Happy 4th of July, people in America. Happy uh, Canada Day. Canadian people from the other day. Was it yesterday? SSG is for Appy. Yeah, we're hoping so. She just walked in and she walked out. <laughs> Debs, she comes in here. She sniffs around and then she walks out. What a horrible guest. <laughs> She's like the worst guest ever. Um Hope Dad's doing well, Bob. Yeah, she's he's doing pretty good actually. I'm I'm pretty happy that I'm back and I'm hanging out with him because we get to spend a lot of time together. Um, it's really fun. Like I love that dude. He's a he's a pretty cool dude. So you heard dog sounds nice. Well, I guess she has an audio uh, audio presence on the show. Also, by the way, if you're new to the show, my name is Will. I'm a independent space correspondent. Um, I spent the last nine months, 10 months, something like that, down at Starbase, uh, filming and doing live streams from Starbase. Um, we had a studio down there for almost a year. I had to come back to New York due to family stuff, but I'm back here. We're doing this live and we do a lot of shows from the studio here in New York, and we're going to be moving on to different studios in the future. So if you want to help out, hit the subscribe button, just hit the like button. Super free. Takes a second. Like I said before, if you were here during the intro, it helps YouTube know that you like starship stuff so check out starshipshirts.com too because that's our merch store you can get cool shirts 
Starship inspired stuff, NASA inspired stuff, space flight inst inspired stuff. So check that out, starshipshirts.com. There we go. That's the ad. Is that an ad? I guess it's an ad for this morning, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> Timothy asks, is there a launch scheduled? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what time is it scheduled? Um, the There is a launch scheduled, but it's sometime this summer for Starship. Sometime this summer. There's no actual date set in stone yet for a launch. Debs, you are the champ. All right. Debs is the champ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debs. You'll get some Starships, hopefully, in the next couple seconds. So if you do a super chat or you do a, a super sticker, you get, maybe you get an alert. It's cool Starships. And go. Maybe it's down. I'm sorry, Debs. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, why? Oh, there it comes. Okay, there it is. Debs, there it is. It took a little while. Thank you so much, Debs, for that super chat, super sticker. Really do appreciate you, of course, for helping me out. I don't know. Sometimes these things don't work. It's live. You know, you just do it live. Since you got $1.49, you get 1.5 starships. So we get to cut you off right about there. <laughs> so every dollar you uh, put in the super chat, you get that many starships on screen. So if you get a full flight, that's $1.00. Two full flights, two dollars, etc. So thanks, Debs, for that. You get 1.5 flights. Sometimes I miss it, and I give them like 50 flights because I start talking about stuff. But thank you, <laughs> Pro Streamer. <laughs> exactly, Debs. So this is a little bit different than a quote traditional news show because we just have fun. We talk about the stuff we want to talk about. It's like sitting on the couch with your friends and you're talking about starships. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. I want to talk to my friends here in chat about the starship stuff. I know some stuff. You know some stuff. I want to know the stuff that you know, too. Um, which rocket will launch first? SLS or Super Heavy Starship? That's a good question. Let me think. Just a second. I think SLS. And I love Starship. Like, I, I am a huge, huge, huge proponent of Starship. I mean, I moved my whole life to Texas just so I could cover it for nine months just because it sounded like a great idea. Like, I loved it so much that I moved my whole life. So I love Starship, but I really do think that SLS will get to orbit first. They'll launch SLS first. There's not much that needs to be done to configure SLS for a flight. A few quick fixes. Um, you know, NASA spokespeople have said... Like we have a few things to do. We have to we have to fix a seal, and that's not going to take that long. And then we can get it back to the pad. A few other like minor touch-ups too, but nothing really, um, nothing really major. And SpaceX still needs to do uh, static fires. They still need to stack Starship. They still need to do um, so many other things. They have to do. A, you know, maybe they're going to do more cryo tests. You know, for they're going to have to do a cryo test on the ship. They're going to have to do possibly new more cryo tests on the booster. Um, they're going to have to stack the booster and the ship together. And sometimes that takes a while. So I was there for two stacks, I believe. And um, we didn't even know they were going to stack it. Uh, for the February 10th Elon talk, we knew they were going to stack it for that, but we didn't know which day it was. But, um, and unfortunately, I got sick for the February 10th talk. And I was invited, like SpaceX invited me, and it was a really cool thing. And I got excited about it. And I was all packed up. I had my backpack and my camera gear and stuff. And, um, I got COVID, so I couldn't go to that talk, unfortunately. So that, that was a bummer, but we didn't know, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know when they were going to stack it, but I got down there the day before blind boy 64, you are a new member. Thank you for becoming a member of the cosmos crew. You're amazing. Thank you for becoming a member. It really does help. Like every little bit helps. And I, I say this from the bottom of my heart, every little bit helps for travel bills camera equipment like this stuff is expensive you know you stay in a hotel in brownsville for a week you know what i'm saying every day it's a hundred plus dollars maybe 150 dollars and you stay there for a week for a launch and it's like there you go there's a thousand bucks just to watch a rocket launch you know and streaming live doesn't really pay 
Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, live streams don't pay anything. So every little bit counts. So thank you so much, BlindBoy64, for supporting the show and becoming a part of the Cosmos crew. You are amazing. Thank you. Oh, Scrappy, come here. We have our special guest. Just for Blind Boy 64. Come here. And for dinner. Oh, 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 look at this little chunker. Look at this chunker. Look at you. Okay, so as I was saying, we're just hanging out on the couch. And I got all these cool news things behind me, but that doesn't mean... What? Do you know when the orbital flight of Starship will be? One lick. Okay, one lick to my nose means July. Two licks means August. Three licks is September. And then four licks is after September. How about that? Okay, are you ready? Okay, are you ready to do your job? This is your job. You'll get a treat after the show if you do this. Okay, and lick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's going to be... <laughs> I think it's going to be December. <laughs> you got right in my mouth, too. Right in the corner of my mouth. What are you doing? She's a freak. She's a little freak show. <laughs> Deb's thanks for the scrappy. Thank you so much. So I'm, according to that dog, she was, she said it's uh, maybe, I think that was like six, five or six. I couldn't, I don't know. She <laughs> smothered me. And kisses and dog slobber. And she's just looking at me now. She's creeping on me. She's literally the best dog ever. Um, <laughs> Court Holio, three. Oh, man. Going for third week of July for a launch. Tin Man, that is aggressive. Aggressive. Four, third week of July for a launch. I think that's very aggressive. Um, now, let me show you guys. I want to show you guys this, too. And I haven't even check this out myself but um there we go i'm gonna do the road closures so we can check this out together here's the road closures coming up these are kind of cut off a little bit but you can see uh tuesday the 5th possible closure from 10 to 10 wednesday july 6th from 10 to 10 thursday is a new primary date uh july 7th and then monday the 11th and july 12th alternative date 10 to 10 seventh so this is a thing that a lot of people don't realize about starship and about um boca chica beach is that boca chica beach is a public beach and during the weekends friday saturday sunday those kind of times if spacex doesn't schedule it way ahead of time and during the summertime there is a lot of people coming down there for vacation in camera county Cameron County is uh, working with SpaceX to keep this um, this beach open on the weekends because during the week, there aren't that many people there. I spent, like I said before, I spent about nine months in Boca Chica um, streaming live from Starbase. You can go check out the streams from before. There's a bunch. Go subscribe to the channel and like go back in time. You can see all the streams from there and it's really fun. Um, but on the weekends, there's a bunch of people at Boca Chica Beach. It's only like a three quarters of a mile away from Starbase. So you go to Starbase, you can literally just walk down to the beach if you want to. Um, but during the week, there aren't that many people in Boca Chica Beach. And it's usually after five o'clock, people show up, you know, people go to work and then they come out during the nighttime. They hang out, have uh, beach parties and stuff, and they hang out with each other. And um, they'll, you know, they'll just chill out at the beach. But the weekends, that's where you see from July 7th, until the 11th, there's a big gap. 8, 9, 10, 11, about four days. Four days. I said, I went like this. Four days. Four days. There we go. Four. So, if about four days, they have to wait to test this thing. And that's kind of playing into the schedule of this, too. Because what's going to be happening the week after that? Are they going to be doing testing every single day? Are they going to be doing a static fire on single engines and then three engines and then nine engines and then et cetera, et cetera, 20, then 33. Are they going to be static firing the whole thing? We're not sure. You don't know what they're going to be doing, but I believe they're going to be doing it. Um, I believe they're going to be doing it in very incremental steps because Starship 
it's research and development. It's brand new. If something happens to that orbital launch pad, this could set them back six months to a year, depending on what happens. Because, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've seen them building, um, you know, I've seen them building the, the orbital launch mount and it's, it's crazy. You know, like, check this out. Check this out. The orbital launch mount. There's, there's hundreds of things in there. Cables, wires, pipes. There's, if you look on the right side, like right there, maybe, yeah, right about there, you know, electronics, electronics throughout the whole thing. So if something were to happen during the uh, launch of a starship or even, a, I mean, just a static fire of a starship, anything like that, if anything were to go wrong, the orbital launch mount could get destroyed, like literally could get destroyed. And that's not good. The thing is huge though. So it, it might not destroy the whole thing, but it could set them back. You know, they could, could wreck a bunch of it. So I think they're going to take a really slow and steady staggered approach to this. And I'm not, I don't work at SpaceX. So they might just fly through this thing and just be like, all right, we're going to do this. <laughs> I mean, who knows, who knows what they might do because there might be like, a, they might just be like, all right, we're going to get aggressive. We're going to go crazy and we're going to get this done. But I, I really do believe they're going to take some time and do this. And I think they're going to spend some time to properly test and mitigate every single circumstance that may happen to a starship during the test cycle. And they need to do some things. They need to do possibly more cryo tests. They're going to do a pre-burner test. So basically, um, you know, that's before the static fire. And then this, when the static fire hits, they could be doing a static fire, like I said before, of one, three. And then from there on, holy cow, they could just keep pushing it forward and then get to 33. Could you imagine? Like, this is so cool. Teddy, welcome to the Space Cadets. I love you. Thank you so much for the, for the help. Like it really does help out a ton when uh, we're putting together these shows. It takes a lot of time, it takes hours and hours and hours to put together some of these shows. And you know, you help out by becoming a member of the show. So thank you so much and welcome to the Space Cadets. Now, going forward, uh, this is footage from Starbase back when it was super foggy one morning or one afternoon, I think it was right before a storm. Um, but as you can see, it gets really foggy down there. It depends on the on the um, on the weather as well. So there's a possibility that you know so they have a couple days where well the weather's just horrible. They can't static fire test. They can't do things like that because they can't see anything. Maybe the moisture is too high. Maybe you know. And thing is, it's a hundred degrees, man. Like I moved to to Texas and the day I got there, it was 98 degrees, something like that. I moved to Brownsville, um, about 20 miles from Starbase. It was like, it really was like almost a hundred degrees the day I got there. I came from, I came from someplace in the Northeast where it's like green and plush and like there's rivers and streams and like birds chirping. And like, it's kind of like Cinderella, you know, like all the birds and the deer and everything like that. And, uh, or Snow White, sorry. And, it's like all the things in nature, right? All over the place. And then you go to this place and it's literally just like a barren, a wetland. But at the end of that road, there's a gigantic rocket factory and it's so freaking cool. But the weather there is so weird to me as somebody who's not from there. Like the first month or a couple months I was there, we had a flood and my car was flooded up to like the middle of the tires. I was like, that doesn't happen where I'm at. <laughs> like, like I'm from the Northeast. We don't get floods like this. The worst that happens to us is we get snowed in and then we just have to go out there with a shovel and be like, all right, well, it sucks, but we're going to shovel our cars out. Um, we had a flood, you know, and then we had thunderstorms down there. We had all sorts of crazy weather when I was down there, but the heat is ridiculous. It's 106 degrees sometimes, and that's just not safe for people to be out working. So sometimes, you know, maybe they'll give the people, the guys a break, but most of the time people are there working 24 seven. I've said this so many times, but I've been down there. Um, you know, I was down there really late at night one morning, three o'clock in the morning, and there's still people working there. 
So there could be another surge coming in for Starship. Could there be hundreds of people visiting Starbase just to be part of this Starship construction? That's a possibility. But it looks like it's pretty close to done. You know, it looks like it's pretty close to being tested. And maybe if they find something wrong with Booster 7 or Ship 24, uh, they could possibly even, and this is not a good thing, uh, it's a good thing in the long run, but it's not a good thing for us because we're all fans of space flight. We want to see this thing fly. They could possibly just kind of wait till booster eight ship 25 ship 25 has a Pez dispenser. It has a, has a Starlink dispenser built into it. Ship 24 just actually got painted. 24 was uh, painted onto ship 24 on the nose cone. I think it was just today. Uh, so they stenciled it on and it was, you know, that I don't think that's ever been done before. So it looks like what they're doing is moving it forward in a way that they're putting all the pieces together, if that makes any sense to you. So they're putting, I think they're putting all the pieces together to launch this thing or get it ready for an orbital flight, but something may go wrong. Like I said before, a Raptor, one Raptor, one Raptor two may get obliterated during static fire testing. And that, st that Raptor 2 may take out 10 other Raptors. And those other Raptors has to go back to the bay. They have to check it out. They have to make sure that it works. That could take a week. They have to put new Raptors on it. Could take two weeks. So the, the plan for Starship uh, 24 and Booster 7, there's a possibility that, I mean, it could be later on this year. And according to my dog, where was she went to? Uh, December seems like the, <laughs> like the best option for me. I'm going like late August. I'm going late August, September. And as you can see from this footage right here, this, this person walking around, you can see how many, just how much, uh, how intricate this is. There's, there's fuses, wires, all sorts of things all over the booster or all over the uh, orbital flight pad. And it's like, if anything happens to one of those Raptors or if something happens during the, the static fire, oh man, it could wipe out a lot of stuff. So I think I really do think SpaceX is going to take its time. And I think they're going to spend a lot of time just figuring this out slowly, steadily and securely and safely, because if they don't, there goes the whole test. You know, there goes everything in Boca Chica um, for a little while. And I think that I think it's important for them just to like, just chill out, you know, even though Elon wants to launch this thing in July, you know, I want this thing to launch, launch in July too. It's only a couple of weeks away, but we won't really know until they post something, you know, until, until Elon goes, Hey, we're going to launch this thing. And, you know, then like, I'm going to freaking get down there as fast as possible and start covering this flight. So if you want to help uh, for that, uh, become a member or, sub to the channel or like this video. We have over a hundred likes. Thank you so much, everybody for the hundred likes. I really do uh, appreciate your support. We got two new members today. We got some super chats. Thanks to Debs. Uh, we got blind boy 64 as a new member and we got Teddy as a new member too. Thank you so much, Teddy and blind boy 64 for becoming members of the channel. I just hit my mouse button and it made my mouse go wild. Okay. There we go. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much for all of your support. Um, so I, I think so. Let me, let me ask you this. Let me see chat. I know there's a bunch of people here. So let me, let me ask you this. If you're watching this right now, let me know what month you think Starship will fly. Um, July, August, September, October, put it in chat. Let me know. And if you're watching this later, let me know in the comments below when you think Starship will launch, because there's a, there's a varied amount of, of, uh, responses here that it's going to happen. Uh, early September says blind boy 64 July says Aiden August says court Holio court Holio. That's the best name. Um, Jeff Francis says August cosmic Sentinel said it's already July, by the way, happy 4th of July. Everyone's cosmic Sentinel. Happy 4th. Uh, welcome Ray to the space cadets. Thank you so much, Ray, for your membership to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's going to help literally going to help me get gas money to get to the starship launch. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Teddy says the old boosters and ascends are ready for scrapping. What if they will sell them 
to public as I'd love one in my guard. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, Ron Trader says October. Hey, Ron, what's up? Uh, William Wilson says August 23rd. One link at a time. Uh, LLC says July 31st. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Between September and November. Uh, Malty says, Jeff says August. Um, August 13th, Gary Hardy. August uh, or September says Sir Mayor Darth Starweaver. That's a sweet name too. Happy 4th. Scoop a link. Thanks, man. Uh, happy 4th to you too, August. With any luck, yes, that would be cool. Dare we discredit Scrappy? No, we shouldn't. No, never. She's a wizard. She's a space wizard. She should never, ever be discredited. Uh, Mighty Don Dondon says September. I missed the when hop days. I know, blind boy. I know. Me too. We need to see a hop. We need to see something. We need to see a static fire. Even, um, you know, even a pre-burner test would be pretty sweet. I'd be happy with any sort of testing, cryo testing, pressure testing. All that stuff's pretty cool. Um, flight level 180. Happy 4th from Upstate. Nice. August 17th. August 17th. A very specific day. Holy cow. All right. Very specific day. August 17th. Scoop a link. Um, I'm going, I'm going September, uh, myself personally, I think September will be, um, will be the way. And I'm sorry, dog. I don't mean to, I don't want to, the, the space wizard dog to, uh, you know, be in her, uh, I don't want to be on her bad side. So, you know, you never know. She, you never know where she's lurking. <laughs> she's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crediting Scrappy on the animal cruelty. Well, <laughs> she gets she gets so many treats. I don't think uh, I could ever be cruel to that dog. Now, uh, SpaceX is also making suits. Um, July 29th. It's a Friday. That would be pretty cool. Um, they will have to do static fires, ring fire tests, and full wet dress rehearsal. It's going to take a while. They still have to stack this thing. And are they going to do a static fire during the stack? You know, are they going to do a static fire of, of the booster to see if the ship can stay on top of the booster while the static fire happens? Are they going to do any sort of like shake test like they've done in the past? Are they going to be doing any sort of, um, you know, structural testing while it is stacked on top of each other? You know, we've had two stacks before and each one of those, um, have been you know for a few days so uh, for a few days up to a week and during those during that time spacex has conducted tests of the internals of those um so there could be possibly in the future more testing different testing during the stack and the stack's going to be pretty cool because when you see a fully stacked starship it is it is so cool Man, it is so cool. Let me see if I can find a fully stacked. I don't think I do. I don't think I have one. Not handy. But the fully stacked Starship is... Oh, it's something It's something to, to witness. Man, it is literally like the coolest thing you'll ever see in your whole life. It's, it's so cool. Unless you see a Starship launch, and then that's pretty much the other cooler thing that you can see in your life. Um, but yeah, once they do the static fire, it's going to be crazy. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um... He only tends to jump over stuff and test by launch, in my opinion. I think so too, but I, I also think this is so important that I don't think, um, you know, I don't think they're, I think they're going to take their time. I don't think they're going to just jump into this one. Um, Scout says, how does everyone keep their cameras from being stolen? Scout, that's a really, really cool question, actually, uh, because I didn't know that either before I moved to Starbase. Um, so, most of the cameras, the robot cameras down there, they're mounted on rigs, right? So, like, not only would you have to get into where these things are mounted, but you'd be on camera while it happened because there's cameras everywhere, right? So, like, you can't escape the cameras down there. There's cameras pointed at every single part of Starbase and on the road. And if you're if you're going to try it, um, these things are mounted pretty gnarly, too. So, they're, they're very um heavy duty cameras from like all the robot cameras and i'm talking about the robot cameras because the people that are down there on the side of the road like jessica kirsch and myself and all the other people that are down there um starship gazer and stuff like that uh we just have our cameras right in front of us so like 
I had a dude, funny story. I had this guy. Um, I was down there about midnight one night, and there was sort of like a party at the beach. This guy stumbled up to Starbase, and he started talking to me. And I was just taking pictures and like filming and stuff. And he kept getting ridiculously close to my camera, like super close to my camera. And I'm like filming, and I'm like, man, I should go live so in case something does happen, everybody in the world will see this. So I'm like, I'm talking to this guy. He told me that he's here to to buy a Tesla and to what is he was like from. Uh, I think it was from, I don't can't remember what country it was, but he came through Mexico on a, in a van. And then he went to New York city, went to Florida and then came back to Texas to see starship. And he was going to buy a Tesla in Texas, but he told me that he doesn't have any money and he was sleeping on the beach. And I was like, how are you going to buy a Tesla dude? <laughs> so this dude is totally like in my grill. And that was the only time that I thought like, I'm not in like, this is not cool. You know, dudes like dudes messing around near my camera and my camera's nice. So I was like, yo, if I, and, and if I get my camera stolen, like, how am I going to make money? You know, like that, that was my job. Like streaming from Starbase was like paying the bills. So if I did that, um, you know, if, if he, if he took my camera, like he could just whoop, yoink, lift it up and started running, you know, and he wouldn't probably wouldn't get that far because my, my tripod's pretty heavy and my camera was at that point had a cage on it and it was pretty heavy. But, um, the, uh, the fact that like he was that close to my stuff, like you're vulnerable on the side of the road there. Like it is, there's nothing protecting you. Like you're on the side of the road, whether there's nothing to protect you from the weather or other people. Uh, there are some police nearby, um, and they do, kind of patrol the starship starbase area but they may be pretty far away and they probably wouldn't see what happened and you know if they're in their vehicle most of the time they're in their vehicle during the day uh, because it's hot and they don't want to get out because like nobody wants to get outside in that heat that's horrible but thank you duncan for the coffee this morning that was beautiful um but being on the side of the road down there like it's dangerous it really is dangerous. It's not, it's not fun of games. Like it's great. You know, it's, it's a really cool thing to do, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exposed and you're exposed to the heat. You're exposed to the elements. You're exposed to people, random people from all over the place. I met some amazing, amazing people. I met some crazy Karen. I've also met some, like some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Like I met some really cool people from Maine that were there to just to bird watch. And they're like, what's this rocket thing? I'm like, oh, you didn't know. Oh, you didn't know what Starship is. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but I explained everything to them, and they're like, whoa, this is cool. Like, this is cool. Like, they didn't understand. They didn't get it. They didn't know what it was. They were just like, what is this thing doing down here? We came down here to see the Pelicans or whatever. And I'm like, no, this is why I'm here. I'm here for this. That's cool that you're here to see birds and stuff. And I guess it's a bird corridor like an endangered bird species corridor where people from all over the world come to take photos and videos. But I wasn't aware of that. I had no idea. So it was pretty cool to, um, it was pretty cool to uh, know that people from all over the world come there and you just talk to them and they're just so nice. They're so, so nice. So yeah, it's just a, it's a really cool place. Um, <laughs> uh, scoop a link says the feeling of waiting for the launch is equal to waiting for Santa as a kid. Yeah, it kind of is. And when you're, when you're waiting for Santa in like the day before, I can't wait for the day before. It's going to be so cool. Uh, Jordan says, glad you're smart. Well, uh, I thank you. Thank you. I grew up kind of in the streets. I was a skateboarder. So I, I knew what this dude is up to. And I knew he was like, he's up to something shady, super shady. So uh, I just, I took off. I was like, yo dude, I like, I got my shots. I'm going to take out, you know, I'm going to take off. And, uh, so, you know, have a good trip, you know, see you later, buddy. <laughs> it's like, I'm out. <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, dude, see you later. So I just, I picked up my camera, like everything. And usually what I do is I take my camera. It's, it's a nice camera. So I take my camera off the tripod, put it in its case, put it in my trunk, store it in there. And then I take my, my tripod and I put it 
in the trunk in its spot. It's all secured. It's all nice. But this time I was like, all right, dude, see you later. And I, like, took, I was like, yoink. And I took all my gear. Like I had a backpack. I have everything. I was like, I was wearing my backpack at the point. And I just like took my whole tripod and my camera. And I was like, see you later. And I threw it. Didn't really throw it. I like placed it in my back seat. And I was like, all right, take care, buddy. And I like so I shut the door and I took off. I was like, what's up? <laughs> oh, Scoop Link, thank you so much for becoming a space cadet. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. And thank you for becoming part of this community and becoming a space cadet. I think Scrappy needs my help. Um, I think she needs to be another, to be a wizard again. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a cool place, man. It's a really cool place. Just be careful. And I, I building a kind of building a, uh, a, uh, a, a one video to kind of explain everything that you can expect when you're down there because it's kind of hard when you don't know what's going on, you know, and you're new to the area and like you may travel from like all over the world to be there and you have no idea what's going on. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to park. You know, you don't know what to expect. How much sunscreen should you bring? How much water should you bring? Should you bring snacks? When do you go pee? Like, where do you go pee? There's no place to go pee, by the way. So you can't. So you have to go before you leave wherever you're going. And um, yeah, so I'm going to make a video about that. I've been talking about it for a little while now, but I got to get on it. So that's one thing that, that's in the works for the future. I just have to start editing. I have to get it. I have like the beginning of it, the intro, but I don't have the rest of it, which is the, the meat and potatoes of it. And it could be a five minute video. It doesn't have to be a big one. So I want to talk a little bit before we take off here. We got four new members today. Holy cow. Teddy, Ray Bello, Scoop a Link. So, and also we have Blind Boy 64. Okay, so I want to, I'm going to ask you guys this in chat um, or wherever you become a member of the channel, can you guys gift memberships? This is just a question. You don't need to do it, but can you gift memberships? If somebody could test that for me, and you don't have to do it, but I know some other channels have it, and I'm not sure if it's rolled out to everybody yet, but I think I have it. I just want to see if it's a possibility. So if somebody could like just see if that would work, that would be cool, just so I know it's there. Um, Jordan says that would be a cool video. Thank you. Um, yeah, and you can't, there's no public restrooms down there, so you can't, <laughs> you can't pee on the grass. <laughs> you know, sometimes you feel like, Man, I just, I can't stay here anymore because I drank so much water and I'm dehydrated because um, the sun's been out and it's 106 degrees. And you're like, man, I got to pee, but I am also drinking tons and tons of water. I don't know. Uh, Deb says, yep, minimum five members. Okay, so you can do the gift subs or gift members for five members and up, right? Okay. Oh, that's cool though. I'm glad that I have that thing because, um, that could come in handy sometime. So yeah, very cool. Thanks Debs. Ocean toilet, the ocean toilet. Oh, I know people, man. I know people that have done some things in that, in the uh, Gulf and I can't say anything about it, but I know, I know some people that have done some, uh, done some things. Let's just say, that place is wild. <laughs> that place is that place is wild. I've seen some stuff, man. I'm a, I'm a hardened starbaser, so yeah. I, I wish I could tell these stories, man. There's just some there's just some stuff. I, maybe I will someday, but right now I want to keep it pretty pretty cool and chill. But I will let you know that there were some things that I saw that I'm like, whoa, dude, <laughs> what the heck? Um. Can't gift memberships. I'm living in Norway, so I get features later than people in the States. Thanks, blind boy. Thank you for that. Um, as long as you don't drink out of the wrong bottle. Oh, yeah, mighty. I've seen some of those bottles on the side of the road, to be honest with you. I've seen those on the side of the road. People, sometimes there's trash on the side of the road, and you're like, come on, man. So um, one night, Jessica and myself and a couple other people um, started cleaning up next to where we shoot uh, videos, and like right at the entrance to Starbase, and 
there's just like cigarette butts. There's just like, I saw one flip flop and I was like, where's the other one? Like, did you just lose one flip flop and you're just walking around all crooked? You know, I'm like, what the heck happened here? But people, people just leave stuff. Or like when you see a shoe on the side of the road, you see one shoe on the side of the road and you're like, where's the other one? Like we had one foot out the window or something. And then your shoe just went whink and flew off. It's like, where did that happen? Like, how did that, where, where did, what happened to your shoe? Oh man. Yeah. So I don't know. You've, I've seen some crazy stuff next to where we film. Um, and I've seen some crazy stuff at the beach and I can't talk about the beach stuff because it is, uh, it's not illegal. Uh, but it was just, not a not a pretty sight. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say that. It's one of the things you're like, Ugh, what are you doing? <laughs> like one of those things. Like, whoa, whoa. All right. All right. Keep that to yourself. Um, <laughs> those kind of things. So um, yeah. So it's it's fun though, man. I had I had a blast. It was like a whole the time I was there, it was it was work, work, work. I didn't really have a lot of time to myself or to like relax because it was always 24 seven, like always producing content. So, um, <laughs> it was fun though, man. I had a really great time down there and we have to talk about another thing that I've been, I've been, uh, kind of glossing over here is this tweet from Jared Isaacman. Okay. Jared says, and this is a, this is a tweet here from, uh, Eric Berger. We love Eric. Eric's amazing. As it turns out, Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace were the only two bidders for his NASA spacesuit contract. And then there's a conversation. And those suits look pretty cool, by the way. Um, Nikhil says, wonder why SpaceX didn't bid or they will develop first and then offer to NASA. Andrew, Cosmic Andrew, one says, it's a ton of work and there's no easy task. I know they have their upcoming tethered spacewalk, but going from that to a lunar EVA suit is a big leap. Similar sentiments go through here until we get down to Andrew again. No, um, you believe Isaacman gets little Isaacman's little demonstration, and so I don't understand why Driscoll would say this, but it's like Isaacman's little demonstration will be the extent of what SpaceX does with suits. Why would you say a little demonstration? Like I don't understand that, Driscoll. If you're listening, if you're watching this, why did you say little? Because it's not a little demonstration. This is a huge deal. Isaacman and his crew. Um, they're going to be doing an EVA outside of a crew dragon. So I don't think that's a little thing. I think that's a pretty big deal. So Andrew says, no, but I don't think they are working on EVA suits for the lunar surface or even something like the EMU. Uh, they will probably rent axioms if they need them for some reason. And then Jared Eisenman is like, yo, this dude saying my little spacewalk says the EVU suits for Polaris Dawn are not meant for walking on the moon surface or Mars. But in my humble opinion, it would be a mistake to think SpaceX will suddenly stop with our suits. I can't imagine SpaceX ready to launch a future moon or Mars mission to be waiting on another company to deliver spacesuits. SpaceX suits, of course, this is what we're talking about, the Polaris Dawn mission. This is a Polaris Dawn website where you can see an EVA. I'm going to assume this is going to be Jared Isaacman because he's a, a, you know, he's a thrill seeker, he's a risk taker. So I'm assuming that's going to be him doing the EVA. And if he doesn't do the EVA, it's going to be whoever it's going to be like, that's going to be super cool. But how cool is it going to be that there's going to be an EVA, by the way, they're tethered. It looks like they have a tethered cable on them and they have a, uh, uh, some sort of a oxygen cable or something attached to them. So first commercial spacewalk, approximately 500 kilometers above the earth. The crew will attempt the first ever commercial EVA with SpaceX designed EVA suits upgraded from the current IVA suits, building a base on the moon and a city on Mars will require thousands of spacesuits. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be important steps toward a scalable design for spacesuits on future long duration missions. So this is the first step. Jared says, okay, this is it. Polaris Dawn, of course, there you go. Um, and then we have another tweet from Polaris Dawn that has the picture, just the picture of the suit. So, um, let's see if we can get a close up of that suit. There you go. So this is the EVA suit and Jared says, Hey man, this is just the first step and we don't need a moon suit quite yet, but when they start doing moon missions, Jeff Francis, thank you so much for the super chat. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always a great job. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate that. You get five starship launches for that. I think this is two. So I'm going to keep going with this. Uh, but I think Jared's going to be the one that does the spacewalk. But I think in the future, you know, why would SpaceX, like Jared says, why would they spend their time waiting for somebody else to build a spacesuit for their moon mission? You know, if SpaceX is going to be sending astronauts to the moon, private astronauts to the moon, if they're going to be sending people like Jared Isaacman and the rest of the Polaris team. Um, let's see, Polaris Dawn. Let me see here. Got to get back to the, the main site. There we go. But they have a few. There we go. We have a Starship, Polaris Starship, and they're going to be doing a possibly an EV out of a starship. Who knows? Who knows what's going to be happening? But eventually there'll be landing starships on the moon. There's a lunar starship in the works. So SpaceX doesn't really want to wait for Axiom Space. Doesn't, you know, if something isn't compatible with SpaceX, it's better to keep it in house is what Jared is saying. Like if you do it out of house, something may go wrong and it's somebody else's fault. You can't control that, right? So that's why SpaceX needs to build their own EVA suits. That's why they need to build their own IVA suits. And that's why they need to build their own moon and or Mars suits. Because in the future, when they do these things, um, you know, they can't rely on other people. And I understand that, you know, it's, it's a tough one because as somebody who's in the space where I have to rely on other people for, for help for certain things, um, and things that I can do myself, but I know that, if somebody else does it, I have to like, I don't really have to check their work kind of, I trust them enough that I don't have to check their work, but somebody that something like a moon lunar mission, I mean, that's pretty intense. So the fact that they would do that is insane. Teddy coming in hot, Teddy with a 10. Thanks, Teddy. Here we go. We're going to get you some starships, Teddy. Thank you so much for the 10, Teddy. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate you. And we are moving forward with um, the future Starship launch in Boca Chica. And this, all the stuff that you guys do, all the super chats, all the all the memberships, all the stuff really does help get me back down to Starship. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. Jessica Kirsch, I was just talking about you. <laughs> What's up? I was just talking about you and how uh, we cleaned up the beach one time. We cleaned up the side of the road one time. And I, I found a flip-flop and I was like, what is, why is there only one? <laughs> and I was uh, telling people how fun it is down there and how crazy it is sometimes. So I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. Everyone go follow and subscribe. Do everything you can to support Jessica Kerr. She's down there doing amazing, amazing work on the side of the road at Starship and doing other content for, um, you know, SpaceX Starship missions. So please, if you can, go to Jessica Kerr's channel and give her a, a sub because she deserves it. She works really hard at this stuff. So thanks, Jessica. What's up? Um, so we're talking about the Polaris mission a little bit. So here's the current, um, here's the current spacesuit, and then we have these current IVA spacesuits. This is an image from NASA, and uh, this is from the I think it's the Crew One mission, wasn't it? Yeah, Crew One astronaut suit up and walk out. Um, and the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Uh, this is Suchi Noguchi, uh, Suchi Noguchi, a JAXA astronaut. And here's a close-up of the suit that they currently have. But I'm assuming it's going to look similar to this for the EVA and according to Jared's um, images. And also, uh, the moon suit will probably look like this too because it just looks cool, man. Like, come on. But what could they do with it? It's it's going to be similar. It's basically a mini spacesuit, like a, a mini um, spacecraft that your body's in. So imagine this, but a little bit bigger. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. I don't have anything to really represent that, but imagine like a puffy. <laughs> what are these but puffy? Like a puffy winter coat, but at a at a backpack for oxygen and, you know, those kind of things. So imagine that for a SpaceX suit in the visor is going to be... Uh, tinted as well. So I'm assuming that's what it's going to be like. And it's going to be so cool. I can't wait to see stuff like this happen in the future. Like this is all the stuff, like when you're a little kid and you think about space stuff, you think about a suit like this and you think about people that are going to be, they look cool and they do cool stuff. They go to space and they have like this cool life in space. And 
this is like, this is literally the beginning of this stuff. So, um, so if you can like imagine that in probably 10, 15 years, the EVA suits are going to turn into moon suits and those moon suits will turn into Mars suits. And then 10, 15 years from now, there's going to be people working and living on the solar or on the, on the solar surface. Don't live on the solar surface. That'd be bad on the lunar surface and the Mars surface. Yeah. Don't live on the solar surface. You wouldn't make it. You wouldn't make it. <laughs> oh man. Um, so <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, I got myself there. So, yeah, we uh, we're hoping that this will be happening in the next you know couple of years when when SpaceX uh, moves forward with their moon suits with their lunar suits and like Jared said, here we go. Let's go back to his tweet. EVA suits for Polaris Dawn are not meant for walking on the moon surface or Mars, but in my humble opinion, it would be a mistake to think SpaceX will suddenly stop with our suits. I can't imagine SpaceX ready to launch a future moon or Mars mission and be waiting on another company to deliver spacesuits. Yeah, imagine if SpaceX has a Starship ready to launch to the moon. They're just waiting for somebody to be like, oh yeah, it's going to be about a year before your moon suit's done. You guys got to wait for us. No, that's not. that doesn't make any sense. If you're sending people to the moon, you shouldn't be waiting on other companies. You shouldn't be waiting on other people. You should be doing it yourself. Um, and, you know, who knows how long it's going to take Axiom to, to do their lunar suits. Um, who knows how long it's going to take other companies to make their stuff, but basically, you know, the, the future is, it's going to happen and it's going to happen pretty soon. Like in our, in our lifetime, we're going to see some, some people back on the moon, you know, in the next, hopefully the next five to 10 years, we're going to see people back on the moon and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be so cool. And the SLS is happening, you know, so SLS is happening this year, and then they're going to skip next year, then the year after that. So we're not going to get any SLS launches next year, which is a shame because I would love to see an Artemis launch next year. Like cadence of one per year would be cool, but they're going to learn a lot from this first one. And then they're going to take that knowledge and then move it on to the next Artemis launch, the SLS 2 launch, and then uh, the Artemis 2 launch, and then therefore, you know, forward step forward, step forward. And then eventually we'll have people on the surface of the moon. So the first one, lunar orbit, go around the, go around the moon, not the sun, by the way, go around the moon and come back with no people on board. The second one, do the same thing, but with people on board. And that's going to be so cool. I can't wait for that. But SpaceX has a huge hand in that stuff. SpaceX has a huge, huge hand in the lunar HLS program. So Starship, going to be pretty cool. It's going to be pretty cool in the future. So um, that's, I think that was it for today, wasn't it? Booster 70, we talked about Booster 70, we talked about the moon suit. Oh yeah, Elon uh, hung out with a cool, cool person. What the heck? Have you seen this? What the Pope? Elon, what just happened? <laughs> like he was gone. Remember when Elon was just gone for like five days? Then everyone's like, where did Elon go? Well, this is it. This is, where, this is where he was, just hanging out with the Pope. No big deal. No big deal. Right? I mean, if you're the richest richest guy in the world, I guess you can go visit anybody you want to, right? Not many people get to see the Pope. So that was pretty cool. I think these are all his kids. I don't really keep track of his kids. So I'm assuming they're all his kids or people that he really knows very well. That dude's hair right there. Check that dude. That person's hair out like rad. Red hairdo. That's a, that's a main. Yeah, pretty cool. I don't know any, any of Elon's kids, so um, it's pretty cool that Elon got to see the Pope, though. Elon went to the Pope to confess. It's probably, probably. Elon's probably done some stuff, man. If you're the richest person in the world, you probably get pretty bored. So I'm pretty sure he's done some, some crazy stuff. But he's done some... Um, He's done some stuff recently too. He's been partying and stuff too. He's been out of the out of the country, traveling a little bit. So with SpaceX's Starship ramping up and you know everything kind of going forward with that, it's neat to see Elon take a break. You know, and it's possible that Elon 
is just kind of, you know, just doing some stuff, doing some, some family stuff, doing some life stuff. Like, Hey, let's go on a vacation because I trust our teams at Boca Chica. I trust our teams at Starbase. And here we go. Like, I don't need to be there 24 seven. I need to go have a life. So this could be a vacation. And also, um, you know, you get to see the Pope, you get to party, you get to see the Pope. Cool. Good for him. You know, that's pretty cool. Not many people get to do it. And considering he has all the power that he does and all the, uh, all the sway that he does, you know, Hey, can I go see the Pope? Yeah, of course. You're the richest dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, Deb says, I predict man will not walk on the solar surface. Yes, I predict that as well. <laughs> uh, Paul and Jocelyn says, uh, hi, Will. It's great to watch your live stream. Keep it going, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sank. Thank you. Uh, Paul Rob says, sup from Ireland. Hey, what's up, Paul? Yeah, you correct, Debs. Man will walk the solar surface. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, NC Davis. Hi there. Bye there. Wait, NC Davis was here? I missed NC Davis. Where? I don't see NC Davis. Oh, there you are. I just joined and heard. I think that's it for today. I guess I'll catch the replay. NC Davis. No, I'm still here for a little bit. Um, no design changes for the next few weeks. Yeah, I think they're just going to be going through the paces. So um, I really do wonder what he asked the Pope, pro hopefully for world peace. You know, like, hey, Pope, can you like nudge, nudge, please make people stop fighting and make people understand that space flight is pretty cool. And maybe, maybe that's what he's going to do. Maybe you talk to the Pope and the Pope's going to be like, hey, by the way, support SpaceX because SpaceX is cool and they're doing some cool stuff. So who knows? Who knows what he talked to him about? But NC Davis donated. Thank you for the one, NC. Appreciate you, of course. Every single time. We have we have a new members today. We have a bunch of new members. Blind Boy 64. We have Teddy. We have Ray Bello. We have scoop a link all new members of the channel and we have new subs we have super chats from debs we have super chats from jeff francis we have a super chat from teddy one from nc davis thank you so much for supporting the show everybody i really do appreciate it everything that goes into the show goes into the show like literally all the things that you do super chats memberships everything goes right back in so the reason why i could get to starbase the last time is because of you so thank you so much. We have 162 likes, 164 likes that just happened and 153 concurrent viewers. Wow. So cool. I, you know what I want? I want to show you guys this sometime, but I don't know how to do it right away. Um, I want to show you what the control panel of um, YouTube is all about. And I want to show you guys what I see, because I think it's important that we kind of have this, you know, we have a relationship where we talk to each other, um, but you don't get to see my side of it. And it's kind of funny because like I literally, I have a green screen here. I'm in a little tiny room, so I have to have a green screen. So I have like all this cool stuff behind me. I'm not actually in a studio, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not in like a big studio, but I just want to let you guys know that because like, I'm just being real. So, and I'm, I'm always going to be real with you, you know? And I think it just looks cool. Like that's it. I was like, oh, that just looks cool. So I put this thing behind me with all my starship footage and like other footage that I, you know, from NASA footage and stuff. And uh, I think it's a Battlestar Galactica some, somewhere in the background too, really blurred out like a Cylon somewhere back there. <laughs> so yeah, you might see that somewhere. Just take keep, uh, keep an eye out for that one. See if you can see the Cylon. Um, how is NASA supposed to continue to push to the moon if it takes them 20 years to make one ship? Yeah, exactly one like, exactly. Yeah, it takes a long time. You know, these the Starship has been, Starship has been in development for a long time. Um, so, you know, the Starship and SLS, they've been in, in prog, you know, since what, what was it? Uh, 20, I think Elon said something about the BFR like 10 years ago or something. It was like a long time ago. He said something about it. So in theory, I think they had a, an old tank too, that they made. It was like, Hey, this could be a Starship someday. And it's like this gigantic tank. And I think that was like 10 years ago. So stay, like Starship has been in development for a really long time. And SLS has been in development since forever. So they're really kind of like neck and neck that they're they're working together to kind of build this next civilization. SpaceX knows that. Elon knows that. That they're working together to, to build this future of humanity in the stars. So 
you know, why not take the time to do it right? And I think that's what SLS is doing with their partners and NASA is doing with their partners and SpaceX is doing. They're just taking their time, just like the next test phase. Jessica could probably talk about this more because she's down there live all the time, but um, make sure to tune into her when she's live because you get to see things uh, every day that you don't get to see on the robot cams. You know, the, the robot cams are very impersonal. Uh, you just get to see a thing. You know, you get to see the... You get to see the starship, but somebody like Jessica or when I was down there live streaming or other people that do the live streams, um, you get to see people and they talk about the things as they're happening. It's really, really cool. So make sure to check out the live streamers that are down there. And it takes a lot of effort to do that stuff. Like when I got down there, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. I've seen other live streamers and I was like, that looks like a lot of fun and it looks like hard work, but I had no idea. No, no, like nothing, like and nothing can really prepare you for what you have to go through in order to do that, because there are days when it's 102 degrees outside and you're like, I should probably go down and stream because I got to keep this channel going, <laughs> you know, and I know it's hard. I know it's so hard that, you know, people still do it. People do it all the time and I'm going to get back down there. So that's the plan. I'll get down there. I had to take a break from it for a little bit for family reasons. Um, basically take care of my dad and, you know, I'll get back down there to do live streams again. So we're going to do the live stream of the launch. So that's going to be fun. So if you want to support that, make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe. That would be really cool. If you could subscribe to the show, it would only take a second and it's free. And it also shows YouTube that you like starship content and starship. I don't know why the Pope is still on here. With Elon. Like the, you're just staring at the Pope and Elon and, um, uh, you know, subscribing is free and it only takes a second. And it shows YouTube that, hey, I like Starship content. So I'm not doing this only for myself. Like it does help grow my channel, of course, but it also shows YouTube that, look, you like Starship content. I'm going to send you a little bit more Starship content here and there and you'll get cooler stuff. So you'll get recommended cooler Starship content or SpaceX content or spaceflight content. You know, they might, they might recommend you stuff that you've never seen before. And it's really cool and you'll experience some cool stuff. So Make sure to do that to all the show, like all the shows that you watch, make sure to subscribe to them because they're, they're all doing really great stuff if you keep watching them. So, uh, one Tesla style starship factory, they're working on a court, they're working on it. So I think that's what the one of the Cape's going to be like. I think it's going to be just in one end, out the other end. You know what I'm saying? Like in one end goes metal and out the other end comes a starship. Um, passing with S is asked, how's dad? Dad's doing pretty good. Actually, we're going to have a little, uh, little 4th of July party today. We're going to be hanging out. Um, and we're going to be doing, he likes to, so we do these things. Uh, we call them, we call them deer hunts, but we don't really hunt any deer. And, um, unfortunately he doesn't really have great vision anymore, but he can see deer as we drive. So we're, I drive him around to like all the cool spots where like, there's a bunch of deer that hang out. Sometimes there's like herds of like, I think it's called a herd. I don't know of like 20 or 30 deer. And like, we'll be like, dude, check that out. Because he used to be a hunter when he was younger. So he loves that. So we do that. And we're probably going to do that later tonight. I and mean, we're going to go out to the fireworks too. So um, it's going to be pretty cool. I, I love that dude. He's so cool. He's so nice. Like he's such a genuinely nice dude. And um, yeah, it's so cool to be around him again. I'm so happy that I, I get to hang out with him. But you, you know, as the kids say, hashtag YOLO. So you got to take advantage of the people of the time you have with people um, when you're here with them. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was a good idea um, to head back here and help him out because you never know. And, you know, he wasn't going through a great time the last, you know, I was gone for nine months, nine, ten months or whatever. And coming back here, um, like brighten up his spirits. So if that's all I have to do, if all I have to do is be here, that's cool with me. So I'm happy to, to help him out and he's doing great. And, um, yeah, he's doing better than he was, but he's still 82, 83. So twilight years, you know, like just getting up there. So I want to be here for him as much as possible. So that's why I came back. But, um, you know, I will be going back down to Starbase, and hopefully I loved it when I was down there. I thought it was really fun. The only problem was, um, like I was hurt for a lot of that time too, when I was in Starbase. So my ankle was busted for like, I couldn't walk really for like two months. I was like laid up in bed. So that kind of sucked, but 
um, I loved every other part of it. I thought it was great. I had a cool apartment. I had like, you know, I had cool friends. I went to skate parks, you know, I went, I tried to get in shape, but <laughs> when I was injured, I was like, well, I got to order food because I can't go to the grocery store, you know? So, um, ate a bunch of food, gained a little bit of weight. So I'm working on getting rid of that too. So yeah. So working on, there's a bunch of stuff that we're working on <laughs> for the future. So everything you put in every, like you do every subscribe, you do everything you do literally helps out the show. So subscribing is free. Liking is free. We have 179 likes. Thank you. Also, like I said before, check out Jessica Kirsch. She's really cool. Super nice person deserves support hundred um, percent. And there's other people down there too, as well that um, are live streaming that deserve some support too. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's about it for today. We have 180 likes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm done for the day. I think I have to go do some lunch with the old man and do some, um, I'm going to eat some watermelon, maybe make a couple burgers. I don't know about hot dogs. Hot dogs are always kind of weird. They're kind of weird, but we'll do some 4th of July stuff. So thank you everybody for all your support. Go enjoy your day because, uh, if you're 4th of July in the United States, go blow up some fireworks. If you can have some, have a good time, have a barbecue, have a picnic. If you're not from the U S just go have a barbecue or a picnic anyway. It's always fun. Go outside, have some, have a good time. Um, and maybe blow up some fireworks. Who knows <laughs> if you're from some place that allows that. Uh, do we have any other? Can we host anybody? Is Jessica? Is anybody else stream, streaming right now? I think I can. Is there such a thing as a raid? How do I do that? I don't know if I can do that. I think there's a way to do that, though. Like send you to other people's streams. I don't know how to do that. We'll figure it out for next one. Yeah, that's about it. I think that's it. Redirect other channels you don't have any redirect privileges ask creators to add you to their list oh okay cool so yeah other people can't do it quite yet so let me see at i think i can do that like that whoops i don't know what i just did but let me see if i can do it so check out this person jessica kirsch check out her channel cool stuff always cool stuff that's about it so anyway take care of yourself and we have new members of the show today i want to give you a shout out use use all the shout out uh blind boy 64 we got teddy we got ray bello we got scoopa link all new members of the show we got debs with the super chats we got jeff francis with the super chats Teddy with a super chat, NC Davis with a super chat. Thank you so much. Be safe, everybody. Please take care of yourself and each other. And I'll see you next time. I'm going to probably start doing these almost every day because there's news every day. So be aware of that. Here we go. All right. Bye bye. These are some people that helped us out. Where's the button? This is the, this is the bye bye button. There we go. It's the bye bye button. Bye bye. <laughs> it's always the best. I can never hit that button right. Scrappy says December. I don't know. These are some people that have helped us out along the way, though. And you can help us out, too, by subscribing and being part of the community. Be part of the community. Uh, Samantha Christ, Magair, Jack Savage, Money Flex Life, Neil Thorne, Dave Stetzel, Dave Perucci, David Littlejohn. Become a member. Become a member of the Cosmos crew. Become a star citizen. I want to play that game too, by the way. If anybody wants to see Star Citizen streamed on this channel, let me know. I might stream it on my other channel. I have another channel out there. Starship Daily is my other channel. Dude, I'm going to do that. Why don't I do that? <laughs> Why didn't I do that? I'm going to do these live shows and then I'll send you over to my gaming channel. I'm going to do a Star Citizen game channel. And you guys could watch there, too, if you feel like it might be fun. All right. Take care, everybody. Please. And thank you. Love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>